Gather veterans, it's time to join the fight. The long war begins. This is The Long War. I'm Rob Barron, and joining me once again are my partners in crime, Kenny Boucher and Wyatt Turk. What's up, guys? Yo, dog, great to be here. Yo, what's up? Wyatt, you look different tonight. I do. Uh, I sound shitty again for the second week in a row, but for an entirely different reason this time. <laughs> Oof. Coming to us live from a Best Western church in... Yeah. <laughs> on a hill <laughs> middle of Maryland somewhere sounds like it's pretty country up here though like, it's basically know, Pennsylvania like, it's, it's very pretty here yeah no it's it's super dope there I really I really like that town super uh, I mean I haven't been there when it's when it's winter so maybe maybe I reserve the right to back pedal on that so but yeah, it was cool. Like flying in the country was real pretty. Flying over it, we flew over Annapolis to go into Baltimore. Sounds uh, right. I was like, I didn't know Annapolis was like right here. That's cool. Yeah, it's it's wild how how close everything is to each other there. Yeah, it's almost like the country was you know old, like young and we didn't have like cars and shit and internets and whatnot. It's almost like in order to survive, you're kind of close together, and then as technology expanded and we expanded to the west things got farther and farther away from each other because fuck people and we have cars <laughs> so it's a good synopsis of things so i look at it but uh we got a lot to talk about tonight gw previews got some of these mm-hmm. new space dwarf fighters and new models new hair no, new heresy stuff and why it's out there doing research for us. So we're going to talk about the news and then we're going to talk about these leagues of squads that uh, everyone is polarized about. Why are they polarized? I just say things like that so maybe that I can trigger people. Oh. Okay. So they, can, so they can decide if I'm talking about them or not and then they can ah. audio clickbait. Come huh. Confirmation bias. I get it. Mm-hmm. But nice. let's kick it over to Wyatt first and do our jokes. We can roll out to the Cave of Wonders and get another Peabody. We got like 50 of those things. Would you rather have 10 years of summer or 10 years of winter? Summer. 100%. How's this is a question? Uh, I don't know. People live in different places, Kenny. Okay, how do I, how am I achieving summer though? Is it like fucking up the planets like natural <laughs> more than it no, is? Like it's... You just have summer. It's fine. Okay, so like it's not like I choose ten years of summer and the planet just explodes because nah. I ruined all of nah, this. It's, it's magic. It's <laughs> okay. <magic. laughs> all right, cool. I just want to make sure. <laughs> Oh, man. That's a tough one. I mean, okay. A lot of people have opinions about whether they want to be cold or hot. Right? See? Many this people... There, there's a discussion here. Many people, incorrect people, say they'd rather be cold than hot. And I challenge that by saying, that's not true, and you're lying. What you like is being climate-controlled and comfortable. You like the occasional brisk chill on your face. Ooh, put my little jacket on a go outside and then be toasty later. That's what you like. So what you really like is the contrast and your base state is to be warm or you die. Right? So I can respect that. I choose (laughs) if I had to pick one or the other to not exist in a state where I would die of hypothermia without a jacket, you know? Like you basically, if your body temperature is 98 degrees and the outside temperature is like 78 degrees, like, and you take all your clothes off and go to sleep outside, you'll wake up with fucking hypothermia. It's not even cold. 
We are pathetic creatures that need warm sun and to be near water or we die. I choose 10 years of summer. Fuck being cold. Fuck muddy ass, like snow tracks in my entry place in my my living room for 10 years. Well, that's, that's also part of the discussion is that people live in different areas. So the summers and winters are different there. So, I mean, like you live in California where the summers are like generally pretty nice to be around if you're on the coast. But if you're in like the high desert, summer sucks ass. It's fucking like 120 degrees outside all day. Yeah, I mean, I could exploit this, right? Because I could say L.A. winter for 10 years, you yeah. know, for sure. And which is like the the dream temperature, <laughs> you know. And we do get more rain in the winter, you know. But uh, yeah, that's so. So region plays a factor. Do I get do I get wish mastered into like the worst day of summer for ten years, or just like a normal spread of summer days? And, no, wait, like also, the on the on the wishmaster side of things, what uh, are we talking? Humidity? Are we? What are we talking here? Dry? It's wherever you live, man. Oh fuck that, dude! You yeah. can't even you can't even go outside here in July without. It's like straight swamp ass. Yeah, I mean, I might game it since I live in LA County and say winter. <laughs> I feel like winter winter here is better than summer here. But then I think I'd fuck up agriculture out here. I mean, I think us both, like, there's one month out of the year that it's, like, brutal for summer. And there's one month that's, it's brutal for winter. And as long as you don't get those two, it's pretty temperate. Or the, or the pollenine. Yeah, I live, if, I live, if I live in South Florida still, like Miami, I'd say winter. <laughs> For sure. Nothing, yeah. It's not like anything stops growing. It's the same. You know what I mean? It's like the same. Uh, like everything, everything is tight. You know what I mean? So I think I would game it that way then. I would say L.A. County exists in a state of winter for 10 years. Um. I would make that decree. And I'd actually probably game this a little bit and I'd make it my platform and maybe run for like mayor or something. <laughs> Be like, yo, I'm going to fix a lot of our water issues, a lot of our uh, energy crisis issues. Like, I'm a, you're like, I guarantee that shit. You know yo, I mean? me and this, me and this Wishmaster got this shit on lock. Yep. I don't know. I feel like, Do you just get an average of like the three? Yeah, like summer's yeah, three yeah, months. Average. You get average an average of it. An average. Oh, then that's fine. I probably do. Probably do winter then. For here, pitch asked. Yeah, that's the first question I asked pitch too. I was like, "Am I blowing the planet up? Am I picking for the whole planet?" <laughs> he says, "No, it's magic rules." Nah, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, because I probably I fuck up some of our agriculture ex- export cash flow, but I think I'd simultaneously repair a lot of our water import issues. Uh, you know, and would also really change energy out here because, like, you don't need air conditioning in Los Angeles County in the winter. Like, mm-hmm. it's it's irrelevant. You know, I've always wondered about the west coast is like you know you, you can like desalinate water right but is it possible to like desalinate ocean water to the point of being potable according to dear friends of mine that we are mutual acquaintance with they've been doing that on submarines for 20 years so that's what i'm saying like why is there not like a massive like water desalination you're saying something that bonet says water. every week and gets mad about it. I, I was like, "There's got to be a reason." Like, almost there's gotta like be somebody wants some to own water. Reason that makes it not work. Almost like someone wants to own water. Oh yeah, Israelis do it. The Israelis build them, build them shits everywhere. Almost like this weird law exists in most places where you can't capture rainwater. I wonder, I wonder what that's about. You know, you can't grow uh, wheat and oat either. 
Yeah, there's like a lot of strange laws, like almost as if someone's trying to quarter markets. <laughs> you also can't sell electricity. Yep. Yep. Definitely money involved. I don't know. Yeah, but that's a great one because at first I'm like summer, but I'm like, wait, I live in Los Angeles, man. Oh, uh, see, see now, see, this is what I'm this is like. He says it's, it's too expensive, and the sludge byproduct kills anything it touches. Oh, so it's like worse. So I'm I'm very curious about that. I've always wondered this, like just like a shower thought. I've always wondered because, like, I thought if you just desalinate, you just have a bunch of dry ass salt hanging around. But I guess that's not the case. Perhaps, and also, Corbett, that makes a good point. Submarines have a nuclear reactor, so they also have like a power source that's like <laughs> the best. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> you need like a a viewer of the show that's like a waterologist. Yeah, I want to get like a pro- expert in here one day so yeah. we can be like, okay, we're not doing a 40K podcast. I want to do like a surprise podcast where it's only about the desalination process <laughs> for like an hour. <laughs> On point. Yeah, I don't know. I think that's uh, definitely a, a good one. All, All right. I know is if the power goes out here and it's like under 40 degrees. I am Can't f- power your heat rock. You know? I'm getting a I'm getting a hotel because <laughs> that shit was brutal. Yeah, it's been hot out here right now, uh, like a hundred degrees, a couple of days in a row. Yeah, I don't know. But like, ultimately, I'm like, oh no, it's really hot outside, and I just go back inside. <laughs> 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 I'm like, oh, it's so fucking hot. But I'm just back inside. Fuck this. And I'm I'm done. It's too hot. Or what's really happens is I go outside and I'm like, man, it's kind of hot out here. I go back inside and then the sun starts to go down and then I go back outside. And I'm like, ah, perfect. No jacket needed. Hmm. Solid. Yeah. Solid strategy. I like it. All right, let's do the news. We got we got some news. Or as Kenny likes to title it now and then. In the uh, timestamps, lizard news. Yeah. Yeah, I like to change it up every now and then. The nerve. All right. So, going on pre order this week, which, by the way, if I had to guess or put a wager on a friendly wager, of course, on what the teaser and new releases are going to be coming out this Sunday on Warhammer Community, I would say the Votan Army box is going to go up for pre order because. <laughs> And they are gonna ride that hype train all the way to Bunny Town. And if I had to uh, also guess I'm, I'm on it. I already bought I tickets. Would, oh yeah. I would say it's gonna be a two week pre order come out middle of September. I think it's seventeenth, but we'll find out just in a few short days if that prediction will uh, of course come true. But be uh, be on the lookout. They said it would be September. We know the free mini of the month is Votan. We know the coin is Votan, so it's definitely coming in September. And they're gonna they're gonna ride that that army train army box train home. What are the coins? Um, are they just collectibles? Yeah, basically. Yeah. You if you spend a hundred bucks at a Warhammer store, you get a coin. Uh, what I want to know is if they're gonna with the Warcry uh, free miniature. What they did was they had it on its own sprue, which was really cool. That was the first time they did that since. Uh, you know, they rebooted Sigmar and uh, 40K. Then they had like little demo sprues of a Marine or uh, Sigmar dude. Actually, it might have been a lady. I forget. But so if they do that each month for this miniature of the month thing, that would that'd be really interesting. Because imagine if there's a bunch of Votan uh, little single duders going around that you could just pop into the, you know, the Warhammer store and be like, yo, give me my free mini. Make sure you flex on them. But that'd be neat to see. All right, so actually going on pre-order this Saturday, however, is a little bit different sort of uh, offering. So we got the new White Dwarf coming out. Then the old Jeller Pox Infected, Kenny's Kenny's boys. That's my guys. Coming out as a, as a separate release from their 2018 Kill Team uh, uh, Kill Zone box, uh, $65 for them. The Star Striders, which I think I actually see in play right now on Nightless. And also maybe some custody ones. Those are $60, also in the same box from in 2018. 
Then they're re-releasing or finally releasing the Phobos Strike Team with that upgrade sprue in it uh, from Moloch. That's sixty-five dollars. And then the Kill Team Blooded is what they're calling them. That's got that dope ass Commissar and uh, Renegade Ogren along with the rest of the uh, Chaos Cultist man- Duders uh, from Moloch, and that's uh, sixty dollars. Then the Kill Team Into the Dark box set with all those uh, corridors and things and the new crew and the Imperial Navy Breachers, those, that box is going to be $210. And if you're after all the rules, rules update for Kill Team, you can get the annual book for $45 uh, this go around. And then if you missed out on Moriak, uh, it's $45 for that book too, if you didn't get the uh, uh, the Kill Team box that came out recently. Uh, and if you want the train too, they're selling the train box for 112. So that's all it's uh, going on pre-order from GW this week. Um, and new release was out there. It looked like uh, there's going to be some Blood Angels coming out from Joy Toy. Uh, a lot of people just finally got a hold of the new. They came out with a new joint design. So they're, they're calling them their 2.0 joints for the Warhammer 40k action figures. A lot of people really seem to like them. I haven't got my hands on them yet. But uh, but it's cool that they're they're working through and upgrading their their miniatures to, uh, um, you know, be more actionable, I suppose. So we're barely scratched the surface on those already and they're they're upgrading them. So that's pretty, pretty cool to see. Uh, And speaking of Joy Toy, there is a um, seller over on Etsy that I found called 3D Forgecraft. So if you're looking for uh, upgrade bits for your Joy Toy or McFarlane figures. They got all sorts of different upgrade bits over there, um, all 3D printed, but they look pretty good for the most part. They show a lot of them, with, you know, prime printed out and primered and how they look on the action figures. Um, so, I don't know. Seemed pretty neat. Just, a, just another way to customize your hobby, I suppose, uh, which I was which I was really into. And then Malibu Barbie add on pieces. Yes, exactly. New accessory outfits. Heck, yes. Um, GW previewed before the previews. That was the before the before the previews. That uh, the new Horus Heresy Siege of Terra, the end in the death book, which is basically part one. You know everything that goes down when the the emperor. I know a guy there. who read that book already. Like for like who's had it for four months. Yeah, there is a few of them got out. Uh, that in the the uh, Sanguinius uh, novel also got out. I know a guy who has that too. Yep. Yep, it happens. They keep teasing me and and really just because mm. this is when it's getting. This is like I'm back now, dude. Like I, you know what I mean. Like the setup was important. Like mm-hmm. oh yeah, I get you know. And then like everything in between is like okay, I don't give a fuck about this. And now I'm back. You know what I mean. This yeah. is like this is the finish. You know what I'm saying. And even the beginning was really tight uh, because they expanded upon a lot of things that we put together. Like playing the game you know through like the little entries and books and shit like that mm-hmm. i thought you know i won't lie like w- like one of the most to me interesting things was the this discovering the relationship between sanguinius and horus in the very beginning of the the series because we always know how it's going to end so seeing mm-hmm. them interact it's like nah you're gonna get fucked you know what i'm saying but then like seeing like there are no two brothers closer than them. You know what I mean? And it's like how, like how, you know, like how they got each other's back. So gangster like that. I'm like, Oh, that makes me kind of sad now. <laughs> Cause I used to be like, man, fuck sink when he's get got son, you know? And I'm like, wow. So I've been waiting for this. Right. Not impatiently because I just stopped reading them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. After a book, after about book 20 for the heresy, it was kind of like, oh, I, I see what they're doing here. And then there was maybe a couple like Angel Extremis. Um, what was the one with? Uh, oh, dang. There's a couple in there that between like 20 and 50 that are definitely worth reading. But they are kind of few and far between, in my opinion. Are they, um, though? Because I just get the cliff notes from people on the Internet. I feel like that's perfectly acceptable. No, I mean... I mean, if you enjoyed the Horse Heresy books, I would say read one to twenty. I twenty ish, I think. I'd have to I'd have to look at the uh, the order and exactly pick them out. But then after that, it's just like kind of meh. And there's there's a few in between, and then pick up all the Siege of Terra books for sure. 
Here's the fan theory that I've heard. Sanguinius succumbs to the Black Rage and is the person who fatally wounded the Emperor and killed Horus. I, I think originally they said that he cracked the armor or something, and then that's where the Emperor... Well, he, he wounded Horus, and the Emperor was able to take out Horus. Like, so yeah. Horus kills Sanguinius and hurts the Emperor. That's the canon that we live with, but who right. was there? Nobody was there. Nobody right. can tell us what happened. Ali P was there. And I'm and I'm healing and I'm hearing some stuff like some th- fan theories and through some 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 other people who have some theories that are in different positions that that is something that's being thrown around that Sanguinius is that's the real secret so he's to come to the Black Rage he's the one who fucking killed Horus and the Emperor killed him I'm like that would be the hypest shit of all time like that's the real that's the real shit. <laughs> If they do that, I think that would insensate a lot of folks, to be quite honest. That's part of why I would be so happy. No lie. <laughs> that's no, like half. That, <laughs> that's half. That'd be like some Star Wars ride of Skywalker. But it would shit, finally man. give Sanguinius like his his final because like, like, what is he known for? Like, I fought this bloodthirster and then I got like dumpstered by Horus. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, I mean, Horus was basically more powerful than Cabanda, right? But now he's gonna he's getting his re, like that the story of dumpster and bloodthirsters is getting retold, and he has wings, right? When Emperor's like, hey, it's interesting when I uh, sent you out there, but when I lost you as a baby, you didn't have those. That's weird that you have them now. Almost, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty chaotic. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's pretty. I'm just saying, if you. Let's, let's do it. Let's fucking make this thing official. Blood Angels are three out of four more chaos than chaos. Let's just make this thing official. But anyway. uh, I can't even with this right now. I know. I'm sorry. I'm st- I'll stop. I'll stop. Oh, drops. Drops triggered. I, I get it would be it would be an interesting hook, but like this isn't M. Night Shyamalan fucking Horus Heresy. Like I think if that's I appreciate that reference. They have the some that I don't like that is because it takes away like the stakes that the mythology that the 40k universe has uh, is like is built on. <clears throat> That's why like anybody anytime somebody's like, oh, they need to bring back Sanguinius, I'm like, no, because then there's no there's like no stakes. Like the mythology means nothing at that point. Like sure, we kind of know how it went down but we only know like the broad strokes where we're getting like all the context all the juicy details which is what makes right. it interesting so if they change it too much it i think it kind of ruins the like the mythos it, it could and i don't think they're like this is this is the shit that makes gw gw is this stuff they're they're ip basically and they are very very protective of it and i i'm sure like you know we saw when then all this shit kicked off they're sitting around a table like they've had conferences on this stuff like they've basically had their own internal focus groups like i i just i just don't see it although abnett's a gangster and he comes up with some crazy shit sometimes out of nowhere like if there's gonna be some sort of gotcha it's gonna be abnett for sure and it'll be dope but it won't be like it won't be it an M. Shamalama yes. ding dong mic drop. No, I don't think so. Got I don't it. think so. All right. I, I mean, there is, you know, Abnett has the chops for sure. But that one's just, we'll just find out, man. Yeah, anyway, Siege of Terra, super dope. Um, maybe I should write an article about what Horse Heresy uh, books are actually worth reading. Because I've read the majority of them that I, that I feel like contributed to mm-hmm. what you want to know. Well, at this point, like, so I stopped reading the main series at Unremembered Empire because they were starting to put out those, like, filler arc books. Yeah, I was getting And now that we're bored. into the Siege of Terra and I'm invested in the Siege of Terra, I don't want to go back because, like, nothing is as, as like, important as Siege of Terra now. So it kind of, like, diminishes those books. No, no, not at all, man. Not at all. I mean, you're talking, like, because what was it, seven years? No, okay, so I, I misspoke. So my, my point is, time. is like, 
Sure. There's like 20 to 50, which I probably haven't read many or all of those books, right? But right. now that we're into the Siege of Terra, like I have ceased to give a shit about any like side story or like minor plot point that happens in between like Unremembered Empire and the Siege of Terra. So it's right. like I had there's like zero interest for me there because we're already so far past that. I'm invested into the Siege of Terra that like I would not be interested at all in like this minor fucking skirmish with these characters that oh, have no bearing exactly. on the main plot line. That's exactly what I'm saying is that those books are not worth reading, but there's some other ones in there like that are, that are worth reading because they contribute to the greater plot. Like, you know, why is, these dudes didn't get here or, you know, the death of the origin of somebody or, you know, some thing, uh, I def or something that crop that crops up later. Right. Also, you know, Oh, I'll, I'll We'll cover this when we start when we talk about Horus, but um in the uh uh breakdown on the uh the previews there. So I did want to mention that that book um will be going on pre-order at some point. We don't know, and it is part one. So there will be multiple parts. Don't know how many, maybe you would think it'd be two, but something tells me it's gonna be more like four. <laughs> but that's just my gluten-free gut check. But uh, yeah, the news is a little bit slow. I mean, leading up to the previews on the on the independent stuff, at least. But uh, but I, I definitely enjoyed the previews, um, for sure. What do we want? What do we want? Where do we want to go next? We got Votan. We want to just roll in the previews. Sure. The big old big old GW Nova Open twenty twenty. What's the, I mean? What's what are the? I mean, what is everyone talking about on the internet? Uh, I well, think people the two big takeaways is Votan and Horus. Mm -hmm. Everything that, else was like pretty minor. That seemed to be what everybody was was uh, was interacting with. So we with. got what? So we got a new whatever that Underworlds Warband. Cool looking models, but it's like I can't believe they're still producing that game. To be honest, like I haven't seen people play Underworlds since the first season. But I guess people still play it. Uh, and they were like, oh, we got this like new cool thing for Olgors. And it's like one model. And sure, he, he looks pretty okay, but it's just like one model. Um, and then they showed off like the King of the Giants that looks like the sad old man that greets you at Walmart. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, like I can't, it's true. I cannot truck with these fucking like Games Workshop makes the best models. Right? They have the best design team. They have all this stuff. And they consistently keep choosing to make their fucking giants like these like gods of the multiverse or whatever the fuck Age of Sigmar is. And they look like these like dumpy old dads wearing like loincloths. Like they have knobby knees and pigeon toe feet and guts and they're ugly. Like, ugh, it's I, I, I don't know why they're doing it. Like maybe it's because like the giants in D and D are fucking cool and they don't want to copy D and D, but like your games workshop, you can do whatever you want, and like it could be Age of Sigmar, like the sons of Behemoth, who's like this elder god, and they could have like storm giants and fire giants and like all that cool shit and look really cool, but they don't. They look ugly and gross. I'm just like I can't. They're trying to talk this dude up, and they keep showing like this shot of his face, and I'm like. He just looks like this sad old man that's like tired. Like, no, I liked it. I like the little creepers that are like that. Yeah, again, like, really cool idea. They could have still integrated that, right? Like make their giants these like huge yoked barbarian Viking looking dudes. Like that is more interesting than what they're doing. Like it could be mm. anything, but because of the way that they're like designed, like the way that their anatomical proportions are, you know, they're they're, they're, they're like stupid. backwoods hillbilly giants. Yeah, dude, I just can't fucking get down with it. They're like, so they're like the hills have eyes, giants. Yeah, it's like, ugh. yuck. I I don't know. I mean, I think uh, I think he looks okay. I think the creepers to me look like what cats would look like if they didn't have, if you shaved their hair off. So I'm down with that. Little gremlins. Did they preview the Demon Prince box set? Well, they, they showed it again. There wasn't anything anything new about it, but they did they did yeah, talk the, about that the Sleep of darkness. 
yeah, the Slaves of Darkness army box would be coming out. I think they said December and then the rest of the release afterwards. So I'm the, I do want to read you some before. Well, I, we haven't got to Horus yet, but okay, fine, uh, go to Horus. Like, well, the, couple, the only way to get the new Demon Prince model, the like ball and out of control Demon Prince will be in the in army box, box for an yeah, undeterminate amount of time. They're paywalling the shit out of it yep. for sure. That's uh, so frustrating. I'm shocked. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate I'm that they haven't. That's definitely never happened before. Right, I never saw that coming. Um, also, I think, you know, from the looks of it, there was a lot of indications that the World Eaters would be more towards the 10th edition side of things, if not, you know, next summer. But now it looks like that they're kind of shoehorning them in at some point, at least something. We don't know if it's an army box. It looks like December is going to well, be. They said uh, before the end of the year. Right. If we can hold them to that. I don't know. But well, I mean, there's always an ask. I mean, there's an asterisk on everything nowadays in 2022. I mean, I broke the tail light of my I backed into a tree. I broke the tail light cover of my my car. Right, and I, that was in January. Part just came in uh, August. Like wild, you know. It's like dang. So, you know, there, there's always going to be those asterisks next to things. But what I did notice was that there was no. Like we really haven't seen any supplements yet. So I think I think I'm hoping GW kind of pivoted away from doing all the supplement, you know, fifty dollar supplement, you know, hey, you get these one little things of rules in this for this codex. Because remember Psychic Awakening, they did the same thing happen in the in the swan song of, you know, eighth edition and the ninth edition, they did the whole psychic awakening. And I just don't think people would go for it again. So I'm really hoping that that's the case and they're not trying to, to pull that shit again. Because well, I just I don't think any of those crusade books or anything like that were really selling or those supplement books. I just see them every store I go into. I just sit, and, you know, and those those are fifty dollars, thirty five dollars books, give or take. Um, and now that they got everybody buying the, the chapter approves twice a year, so that was the one takeaway I noticed was they didn't talk about any of that. So I'm really hoping that that's the case that they're just going to kind of, as much as we might not like it, roll out these army boxes and then. A couple of months later, you get a couple of single releases for that army, like whether it's Votan or whether it's World Eaters or whether it's Chaos Slaves to Darkness. And the I Demon mean, it's Friends. undeniably a better strategy to put out a box that has ridiculously awesome models with good rules that we want to mm-hmm. convince us to part with money than to put out a box that costs hundreds of dollars that has like one new thing in it and a bunch of old things in it. And then we justify that by saying there's like $300 of stuff in a box that I'm buying for $250. Like that model's dead. So this model of perhaps all useful, cool shit paywalled Mm -hmm. into the box. Like that's, I mean, that seems like a stronger move. Cause like, I don't want to like, that's why I don't buy those other, I don't fuck with those other boxes, but like, if you're telling me like the only way right. to get this space marine is in this, I mean this demon prince is in this box. I'm like, yep, yeah, that's not a hard pill to swallow, you know. I mean, you, you're always going to be able to get these things on the secondary market, y'all. Like, you know, just exercise some restraint, perhaps. Like, you know, instead of spending two hundred dollars for the army box, or usually they're what two forty nine or something because you get the codex and you get the data cards, um, and it ends up you you basically get those for free, yeah. right? It's a it's a it's a yeah. That model is dead now. Like they, it's it's that everything's been on the shelf. Like f- like fuck that. Yeah, I just think you know you can always get secondary market stuff. So just well, like for example, like the Obliterators and the Venom Crawler were in that one box forever, and now they're in their own box together. Genius. That like well, that's just a sprue. Yeah. They literally like took that sprue. Yeah, they didn't of, make like, a new box. one. They didn't go. They're like, now nah, this is it. You got to get both. I'm like, they're both useful. Got it. Well, yeah, they've definitely been going. That's the one smart thing about the rules is they've basically converted a lot of things to just be like, well, this is the way it comes. So this is the way you play it. Like, oh, and they've okay. been doing a better job at that. You know, like, yep. This is like, I like this vote. Talk about the vote ten box. Like, uh, yeah. Let me pull up the. Uh, because that box looks kind of sick. It's a yeah, two squads. Is a good value. So you get, um, let's see, you get 20 of the Hearthkin Warriors. The hearth, the Hearthkin? Hearthkin yeah, Warriors, which, which can be taken as two squads of 10, of course, to fill out a combat patrol. Uh, 104 page codex with the exclusive cover, 50 data cards. 
um the n n here champion that's the dude with the the huge ass hammer and the the cool like bolter shield sort of things mm-hmm. um Hurricane pioneers those are the jet bikes you get three of those um so just off the you know just off the cuff there and of course the book i probably put a value of 60 bucks each for each of the squat squads probably 60 bucks also on the jet bikes because they look to be on the same side the 105 ovals that the uh, uh outrider bikes are on i believe and then 35 33 50 to 35 for the uh um, the, the captain guy and then maybe 38 ish for the, uh, the champion 60 for the book, oh. or the books 55 now, and then data cards 25. Yeah. So just as you skipped a few things. So the summary is you get, uh, two squads in the troop choice. You mm-hmm. get two characters. One right. of the characters is a dual kit that makes the named character. Yeah. Then you also get five parts. Which are the power armor dudes? What? Ah. Uh, five what? Hearth guard. I don't think so. But not in this picture. Where does it say that at? I thought it, that was part of it. Put all the, did you put all the screenshots in your in your article? Yeah. And I copied the uh, description. So is it jet bikes or they're hard? on this hotel internet. Hold on, here. Uh, Maybe I'm thinking of the other picture they showed that has, like, the full complement of stuff. Oh yeah, that it had all the like the hackathon and yeah, stuff. Yeah, so you do yeah, just, you get the you get the, the other character though. You do get so both like characters. Two choices: that, the bikes and then the yeah. two characters. Yeah, the bikes are sick too. No, that's I mean that's a sick box, man. And if you look yeah. at the bikes, like they look like you can um, uh, make a couple different kits out of them. Like there's this dude. Uh, so the way it works is they have the um, mounted weapon. Yeah, like that's what gun. it is. And there's like a gunner for that. And if you put that onto a model, uh, you actually increase the wounds characteristic. Oh, okay. Nice. That's cool. So the Votan were like a big deal, right? It's a new yeah. faction. They it's- talked about so much. They shut off all the new models. And uh, let's, talk, let's talk about the the one the the tank the vehicle that everyone the uh, land fortress the land fortress, which uh, we we had a picture of it up in the after hours. I just, I just sent you a picture too. You're gonna really like this one. And uh, uh, I haven't seen any of something. these. I haven't seen any of this stuff. I've been staying like away from the internet on this subject. Oh my god, this is so good. <laughs> it's so good. Somebody converted it to be like the turtle van? Oh wow, it's actually well photoshopped. That is well photoshopped. It's probably a uh, Evan Valdike. Yeah, that shit is glorious. <laughs> so this so this new vehicle is I've been seeing a lot of polarizing opinions about it, right? Uh okay. some people some people hate it, some people don't like it, whatever. It's brand new. It's totally different looking. Nothing in GW's lineup looks like it. And it's well crafted. And I think they did a good job. I mean, I do too. I'm, I stay pretty objective though. Like, cause like, I feel like until you hold something in your hand, Mm -hmm. all you have is a flat 2D digital output of a thing that you can physically hold. So all you have is your critique. (laughs) You know what I mean? Of the model. I've never, any model I've ever been slightly critical of. That I physically put in my hands, all all critique, all critical nature vanished. Once I had like that dope model in my hand. Yeah. What, what, I, the I, one that comes to mind was Centaurians when they dropped. Yep. Like or that, even the the Storm Raven. People were like Storm Raven. Uh, Dread Dread Knight was one too. Like these are models I was, I was personally also critical of. Uh, all of those. And once I had my first box of three Centaurians, I was like, these are fucking dope. Once I had my first Storm Raven, dope. 
once I had my first dread night, I was like, dope. Mm. Like I had no issues once I physically had them and they were my, I was like, these are sick. So that's all I tell people is like, you know, being critical of a, of a photograph. That's all you have until you have it, you know, but I promise yes. you it's going to be dope. It's, it looks very well detailed, very well designed like in all the whole range does like the aesthetics you don't want them there's uh it's more for me yeah um, <laughs> um, like I, the more they show off the votan stuff the more i'm like these are this is my spirit animal i love mm. these guys like you they not? showed off the caster who's like oh yeah all. Was he was so cool for him. i i really like the the grimnir or whatever it was um i thought that was pretty pretty fresh but we're gonna so we're gonna go into votan because why it's got a big some ta- a tactical analysis of them here and his section yeah, but good. let's switch over what? to the other controversy what the horus horus what controversy is there that model looks dope as fuck is that when they were previewing it the entire it was the second they said forge roll resin oh yeah, the yeah. Like, so when, the, literally as soon as they said watching forge it roll, live there was a lot of hype. Oh man! A lot of like um, excitement and positivity. And then as soon as um, uh, what is his what is his name? I don't want to butcher his name. Adam Troke. Adam. Uh, as soon as Adam was like, "Yeah, it's going to be Forge World resin," and, and, and even then, when he kind of said it, he wasn't very confident about it. Like, I think they kind of knew that that was going to be like a detraction from the, the good vibes, you know, he's like, yeah, it's going to be Forge World resident. And, uh, it was not received very well. Uh, no, just so, no. So, like just so people understand, this is not like a hundred people watching my live painting tutorial or like 200 people watching Kenny's live painting. tutorial. This was like 15,000 people watching Which, this live in and of itself. 15,000 people is about, half of what they would get normally like in the past right. previews for this like, sort of thing if you were to poll fifteen thousand people that is a pretty good polling metric right? yeah and so fifteen thousand people watching this and it did not go well no no it didn't but i mean well two reasons and then people you know and that was basically what people said they're like price obviously but also just a lot of people don't like messing with resin. Like a lot of folks never messed with it. There isn't a lot of guides out there on GW side for messing with Forge World resin. We talked in the pregame about the quality control issues from Forge World. Like you get anybody else's resin, there really isn't any issues. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a, sub- it's a subject we have, I feel like as eloquently as possible with a as source material experts and professionals have broached over the years like there's boutique ma- resin manufacturers who are ahead of Forge World right now in quality control and GW obviously knows it based on what why it's assessment of like you can even see like the cringe as he's bringing it up because he kind of knows it's the the, the hang up like the yeah, moment and it's like when it, it bothers me, right? Because it's like if I work for a company, right? And I know that Adam may not be, I don't exactly know what his powers with the company are. Uh, obviously, he's a spokesman because uh, he's kind of the face of a lot of these public events. They send him out to like almost everything they can. Um, but if I was in that position, that's something that I would definitely like bring up in our company meetings, right? Like if I'm working for a company and we're charging a premium for our product at that level <clears throat> and they have like what I equate to zero quality assurance, uh, because if it was like, if their reputation was like once in a blue moon, something like this happened, that's like understandable. But this is like, they have a reputation of giving out bad product right that that is forge world's reputation design wise all out of control they are the best like there's no question they have this horus is definitely the best right like Mm -hmm. the design team killing it right i don't want to detract from that 
But when you're talking about the product that you receive, like I've bought a lot of Forge World stuff in the past. I haven't bought any in five, six years because of this, but I've never once gotten a Forge World model that I would consider like without defect. And that's saying something. Like, that's a big deal. Like I buy from a lot of different companies, like talking about people that are smaller with uh, less margins, like Creature Caster or Artel or mm -hmm. uh, what's one of the other ones? Um, they make or, a lot or of minis, things. Problem Libra Web. Demonica, like, there's, there's so many, like, right? And there's a lot. And when you see their product on the shelf or you receive it in the mail um, and you get a defect, like that's actually a big deal because it almost never happens. Like that's those companies' reputation. So when you see this stuff with Forge World, it's not that like the model isn't tight. It's that it's tight, but it makes you sad because you know that if you were to buy one, it's going to be all fucked up when you get it. And that's, mm -hmm. that's like, and G I mean, and GW that. has entered into a world now where people are voting with their hobby dollars. Now that's the difference. Yep. Back in the day, they didn't, it, it didn't matter. They're like, they're going to buy it. Who cares? Yeah. It just boggles my mind. They let it go on for so long. <laughs> I, well, I don't think they that. I don't think they realize they're at that point yet. I mean, they know they have the metrics. They're like, why aren't people buying shit or why aren't people at this? You know, remember, they basically did a sale last when it was when it really started to get slow last like uh, November, October. They did a sale. They're just like they didn't call it a sale. They did a sale. They did discounts like this summer has been brutal for retail. Like I read an uh, article in The Wall Street Journal this week that was basically like, retailers are are just flooded with inventory right now and everybody's trying to clearance shit out and bring in their their holiday stuff you know this labor day weekend of course you know we're gonna have a sale on the 3d made to order marketplace too because why not right it's been slow so give everybody the opportunity to like pick stuff up you know for whatever project they're working on but like you know we're we're small we're, we're small potatoes here like we're not amazing we're not bed bath and beyond which probably is gonna go out of business anyways if you load that store up sorry uh, you know, so there's there's a lot of stuff out there in retail, and it, when it trickles down to to our niche, right? Like they just haven't really gotten it yet. And in G Dub, they're not making the right pivots fast enough, in my opinion. But I mean, showing dope shit off, and you know, this new horse, yeah. it's it's awesome to see. It's one it's of the best awesome models I've ever seen. It uh, it is it is it's it's one. I mean, as soon as they showed it, I was like, oh, 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 oh. oh man, this is this is dope. Now imagine when they do the emperor, right? Like they got to. At I don't some know. Point. Like every time, I kind of have to like temper my expectation because like when they showed this off, like it was so clean that I'm like, oh shit, they're making like a plastic like Horus for the new plastic Horus Heresy range. This is fucking tight. And then when they were like, yeah, this is going to be a forge world resin model i'm like oh so what they're showing us is their 3d printed prototype that they painted up all nice and no, well, that's, that they've the been doing products that's... they're going to sell is going to be not even close to that um you're never going to get those talons in intact dog it's just never going to happen it's yeah i mean it's 50 50 i mean maybe maybe this time it'll be different i, I just like looking at pictures i'm never going to have one that's how i that's how i reconcile that um well, I mean I'm just saying like people would maybe not buy recasts as much if they you know got fair value for their dollars because like the reason that I'll buy from somebody else is because they'll get that model and they'll fix it before then creating a new mold and casting mm -hmm. that I don't think GW cares about selling models that much anymore man they're a licensing house now I mean in a lot of ways yes I don't know they seem to care a lot I mean, I mean, some people it, at the business do, but feel like just feel like that hasn't been their trend in their numbers this year. It definitely hasn't, but I mean that's because again they haven't been quick to pivot based on you know what has happened in the past year with consumer confidence. They just can't keep doing the same things that worked for years and years and years and years and. You know, they, they're they they're already 18 months out. Like once they decided they needed to pivot, like maybe last summer, we'll say, or maybe even last spring when Pariah Nexus was, you know, people were like WTF. Um, 
you know, that would put them out to this holiday's releases. So say they realized last spring that, oh, crap, people aren't drinking the Kool-Aid anymore. We got to do something. What do we do? And they came up with a bunch of plans and they decided to implement one. And maybe that's what we're seeing now with all these army boxes and these multiple waves of releases instead of the psychic awakening stuff. It's really hard to say, but they have been doing subtle, subtle pivots. But in a lot of ways, it, it kind of might be too little too late, unfortunately. But again, we're seeing stuff now in these previews and we're seeing things go a different way, you know, where we know what codexes are coming out up until the end of the year we have a vague idea of what's coming out right like but here's the thing a lot of people didn't ask you know they're like oh, okay astro militarum will be you know after the vote town okay cool you know that that all works but what about all that space marine stuff we've been seeing like is that going to be next summer now or is that going to be spring like where is that going to drop right so yeah there's still like, plenty of stuff a, out there um i mean marketing is hard dude like it just is like there's it's it's uh we see it everywhere we see it with movies see it with um tv shows video games like mm -hmm. all these other sectors where there's like there's a sweet spot to unveil something where people wait a certain amount of time where that like that wait is acceptable so that's why when they show stuff off they're like it's coming this time right so it's like they show off a trailer for a movie it might be next year, but you know that it's going to be like eight, nine months next year. And you have that expectation. The problem that Games Workshop has is they've only taken like part of that. Like they've taken like part of the thing that works and not the other half. And that's why it's not working for them. It's like, sure, we want to see Currently. these shiny, new, exciting things. But also there's that follow up where it's like, hey, here's this cool new like space marine thing. Expect it in like March. Right. And if, if they did that, I think that is like that sweet spot that people want. Like you don't have to tell people that it's going to be on like March 16th uh, at this hour or whatever, because like sometimes that's not feasible. But if you're like six months out, March of next year, then people have that expectation. They're like, oh, OK, mm -hmm. cool. Like I know that it's coming. Uh, I know that it's going to be in March. Um, I can I can kind of wait and I can expect for that. But it's these like. We're going to show you this thing and then it's like who fucking knows when it's going to come out and like no word at all until it's like the pre-release week right like they need to figure out that sweet sauce that everybody mm -hmm. else already knows it's just you know if you're going to show off this new demon prince model be like hey expect this new demon prince model in like october you know if people would be fine with that yeah i, I agree with you i did want to read this uh thing that i think a few a few folks might have overlooked you know, the, when it come, when it came to Horus, because they didn't really touch on it in the stream either. So here's the exact verbatim description on GW site. Rendered in high detail resin, this model is the first in a new character series from Forge World, representing each of the Primarchs at the height of the heresy, whether fully under the sway of chaos or rallying to defend the Imperium in its darkest hour giving us a fresh look at the driving characters of this epic saga as they lead their legions into the biggest battles. So all 18 Primarchs are going to get new models. Well, boom. 17, right? Oh, yeah, I guess 17. All 17 we're gonna Primarchs. Like, we're going to get like a, uh, like in memoriam for Ferris Manus. <laughs> we're talking yeah. about like the height of the heresy. Like that Maybe he's dead for you at this point. Maybe he's one of the, uh, the heads on, uh, on Horace's belt. Yeah. How how that's gonna get like, that a, like what, a what what happened to Ferris? Ferris. See the one I got his head cut off? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. Like oh I guess I guess that the Alpha Legion twins could actually be two, maybe. If there is twins, we don't really know, do we? Either way. Ferris Manus is a 30k terrain piece. <laughs> Oof. Savage. Good one, well, Ferlin. Didn't, didn't somebody say they saw it. they saw his head in a warp and it was screaming or something? One Who of the knows? demons? I'm pretty sure that was a thing. 
anyway, so definitely look for more of these models, which are going to look super fresh because let's just say some of the Primark models are maybe leave a little bit to be desired. But they were dope when they came out. But that was then. No, I'm excited. Now. All right. So so we can stay on track and meet our time goals. Uh, Rob, you want to kick it over to Wyatt so we can talk about Votan? Hey, hey, Wyatt, let's talk about Votan. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> so the new kids on the block, what do you need to know about the Votan? So uh, Codex was leaked. It's out there. I can't tell you where to find it, but, you know, if you're cool, you'll figure it out. Let's start off with some of the important things saw, you need to know, even if you're not going to play Votan, right? I saw it's a bunch of it on Spiky Bits. Just <laughs> oh, saying. Yeah. You check there. You check there. It's definitely, uh, it's definitely on Spiky Bits. Yeah. Get that credit card ready for them pills. <laughs> for them pills. Them pills. You know which ones. Uh, so ones. even if you're not going to play Votan, if you're, you're probably going to play against some Votan, right? So three of the big army-wide rules you got to know about, okay? First one is going to be Eye of the Ancestors, right? And this is the overarching um, kind of defensive ability. Or no, sorry. Uh, this is the overarching offensive ability that the Votan are going to have, right? And you know dwarves, they're they're kind of grumpy. They hold a grudge. So this is the, like the grudge mechanic for the space dwarves. They're called Judgment Tokens. And Eye of the Ancestors is kind of the big word salad rule for how things get these tokens, right? So if an enemy unit destroys a Votan unit, that enemy unit gets one token. If an enemy unit successfully completes an action or a psychic action, they get a token. And at the end of your opponent's turns, the Votan player can pick an enemy unit that's within range of an objective marker uh, that your opponent controls, and that unit gets a judgment token. So if I'm playing Votan, and Rob is playing Custodes, and at the end of Rob's turn, he's holding an objective, um, I get to pick that unit, and they get a judgment token. And you don't spend them. They're just there forever until the end of the game. If something is like placed in a transport, they still have them. Uh, if mm. they're picked up off the table and brought back on, they still have them, like that kind of thing, right? I like that they made that uh, clarification, too. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Um, and you can only ever have three. It goes from one to three, maxes out at three, and the way it works is uh, when a Votan unit uh, attacks a unit with a Judgment Token on an unmodified hit roll of six, it automatically wounds the target. If it has two, that number changes to a five. If it has three, that number changes to a four. So the unit has three judgment tokens and I shoot all my guns at you. Uh, any hit roll of a four is going to automatically wound. Right? That's their that's their cool mechanic. Mm. That is a cool mechanic. Right. Uh, the second one is called steady advance. So dwarves, they're not marathon runners, but they are dangerous over short distances. Uh, <laughs> most of the units have movement five. Right? They got stubby little legs, uh, and they don't run very fast. Right? So they have this rule called steady advance, and the way that works is they ignore modifiers to movement characteristic and any or all modifiers to its advance or charge rolls. Right? So if they're in range, like they're they're getting there. They don't care about modifiers. And then the second thing is that when they advance, they don't make a roll. They just go three inches. Right? So they're not like sprinting over terrain six inch advance. They only get three. So flat three advance whenever they advance, unless they have a keyword called accelerated. These are for the vehicles. So all the vehicles are going to get a uh, six inch advance, just flat six. So it's either three or six, like no uh, random dice there. So when you're playing against Votan, it's actually quite a bit easier to pre measure your opponent's movement because you know that that guy is only moving five, six, seven, eight with an advance roll, and that's it. Like, that's all they get. And then the third one is called Void Armor. So they have all this cool tech. They live out in the void with their spacesuits and everything, and it's a two-parter. And everything in the Codex has these three rules, which is why it's important. 
So for Void Armor, each time an attack is made against a, this unit, your opponent cannot reroll the wound roll and cannot reroll the damage roll. Holy shit. And it has built in mm. armor. I think that Hecaton has that void armor, by the way. All of their data sheets have these three rules. Every yeah. single one. Wow. These are the, that's like the three big things you need to know. Yeah. So I mean, army wide, has, no wound reroll or damage reroll. Also important. Oof. Interesting. So just if you're, if you're going to see them on the table, you know that like, no wound rerolls, no damage rerolls, and they have built in armor and contempt. Um, you know what their movement values are going to be. Everything is set to those values. Um, and you know about the judgment token thing. Mm. Uh, they do have sub factions. They're called leagues. So instead of chapters or whatever, they're just called leagues, right? There's a, a number of them. We're not going to get into every single one, but there's a couple of good ones. Uh, there was kind of the main poster guys, which are called the Greater Thurian League. They have that kind of like jade green armor color and white color scheme. Um, and every league has like two things. Um, they have their custom, which is kind of like their chapter tactic, right? So, for example, the Greater Thurian League, uh, they count as two models when determining control of an objective marker or five models if they have a wound characteristic of 10 or more. And each time a unit with this custom is selected to shoot or fight, you can reroll one hit roll or one wound roll when making that unit's attacks. Pretty standard. And then the other thing they have is the Ancestral Judgment. And each one of the leagues is a different one of these. Uh, just for example, on these guys, each time a model with this custom makes an attack against a target that has one or more judgment tokens, that enemy unit is considered to have one more judgment token than it actually has to a maximum of three when determining what bonuses apply to the attacking model's attacks. Very useful. Uh, each of these is also going to have a warlord treat, a relic, and a stratagem. Um, there's another league that... Uh, I like a lot. They have a pretty straightforward kind of tough beat em up uh, league custom. They're called the Emir Conglomerate. <laughs> and their league custom is they add four to range characteristic of all ranged weapons, excluding relics. And models in a unit with this custom have a sa that have a save characteristic of two plus, also gain a four up invulnerable save. And then other models in a unit gain uh, a five up invulnerable save so it's like the tough boys and these guys like their uh beam weapons their stratagem is called pulsed beam discharge and in the shooting phase when um, a unit from the army is selected to shoot select one model in that unit and then select one beam weapon that they're equipped with till the end of the phase each time a hit is scored with that weapon the target suffers one mortal wound in addition to the normal damage. Um, and then you ask, like, well, what are beam weapons? Well, beam weapons are a new <laughs> mechanic as well. Uh, it's really straightforward. Uh, we've seen this mechanic and other things. Uh, basically, a beam weapon, you select your target, you draw a straight line, the closest base-to-base, uh, unit-to-unit, um, and then you roll to hit, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. But any other enemy unit that is a viable target that is underneath that line uh, also gets hit by it. That's pretty, I mean, I think we saw, I remember we saw that stratagem and we didn't know what the leagues did or anything back in the day. Yeah. So that's pretty fucking cool to see. Right. Uh, so just real overarching stuff. Like uh, they have a lot of good tools that everybody wants in a codex like they have something that makes you fight last they have uh, a good way to get rerolls they have a good way to uh, have a little bit of movement tech here um, they have a way to make the unit uh, obsec when it isn't normally obsec so it's like these tools that most every army would like to have but in a fair mm -hmm. uh, execution so it seems it seems the, fairly modern too 
Right. Mm. So it's like you have the Space Marine guy who's just like, I make all core stuff off second and R, right? And then you can like boost that out to uh, like an extra six inches or whatever it might be. So then it's like all this stuff is now off second. That's a little feels bad. Yeah, you're, Whereas, you're, yeah, you're seeing so, the trend as being a point and click command phase element. Yeah. So it's like this one unit is off second. That's going to be. Yeah, that's a modern. That's uh, very modern. Also, this advance, these advancing rules they have seems kind of like a modern take on yet again removing another die roll. Mm-hmm. Um, right. And cool. their stratagems are very uh, useful, right? That we when we when we reviewed them initially, there was a, there was multiple uh, hit and wound modifier stratagems, yep. which are just American Express card useful. We have a, a very useful. Uh, this grudge token mechanic hits convert wounds, right? Very cool. Yeah, it helps out a lot. It now, it, and it's funny because very recently, looking through a lot of chaos stuff and other things, and I was just looking. I've been just looking at rules. I'm like, man, this like automatically wounds thing. I'm seeing this a lot. Like, I'm just like that was recently in my head, like in the last 24 hours. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, GW comes out with something new. Remember, transhuman was new. Transhuman physiology. That was kind of ushering in right. a new rules mechanic. And kind of like how uh, – so there's, there's Transhuman in the Chaos Space Marine book, but it's tied to Mark of Miracle. Uh, right. Similar in this book. They do have a Transhuman. Transhuman tied, tied, tied to tied, Intercessor keyword or Primaris keyword in, for Space Marines now. Yeah, so it's it's tied to um, Shield Crest which is only going to be on like your power armored individuals. And a new so you can, a, well, a new trend I'm saying too, is the uh, things that stop rerolls from occurring is becoming. Yeah. So the point and click obsec is a moving trend. I'm witnessing things that don't let rerolls happen, a quickly moving trend, which I like because when we started eighth, it was reroll city, baby, right? Murder, yep. murder ball central. And then they started changing how how available that is. And then we got core and then we got less availability to these rerolls. And so then we've taken some of the rerolls out of the game. But even still, there's a lot of them. Then we have wound manipulators like crazy and all this other stuff. And plus it and, and, mod, and hit modifiers. So then you're seeing this whole vast trend of like transhuman hitting, transhuman wounding and no rerolls allowed. Right. So that's I think that's great because, it you know, when somebody has like eight combos that play that are just like oh let me just save you time the 16 things i'm about to say i'm gonna do what it means is i hit on two with four rerolls and wound on two with four rerolls okay that's too many fucking rerolls and too many modifiers that's like that's mm-hmm. that's where our game got in seventh that that at front like game had to step in there and say there's no such thing as a two rollable remember like basically it kind of fixes itself these guys have an army wide no wound reroll like damage reroll as well, which is less important because they also trended out D threes and stuff like that as much as they could, so that we have more flat statistical damage. This is why I also like the advanced mechanic because I'm saying like, ooh, less random shit on the table, more better. Yeah, like I love this. I they have I, a lot of really interesting ways of implementing uh, rules that we've seen before. Uh, a good example is the uh, berserkers. So they have what we refer to as a feel no pain, right? It's the rule that like on the die roll of X, right? So um, they have like cybernetic implants. And so their rule is called augmented. And more or less, they have a five of feel no pain, except if it's damage one, you get plus one to that rule. So they have a four of feel no pain against uh, one damage weapon. See, Everything th- else is fine. Things, okay. So I like existing in a DP, high DPS game. And we need things to also be able to not just be picked up. And so you start to see the adjustment here, the alignment. What was really, what's been like jerking off, beating your dick in a master base cocoon DPS for a long time was exploding die rolls, right? Mm-hmm. Remember, we had this trend for a while where it was like die roll is six equal explosion. But then they realized some people's wording was unmodified, some people's weren't. And then you realize the modification train was wrong. So then it switched, they made sure it's unmodified. But then still, guess what exploding die rolls turns into? Because when you still have like full rerolls and other things at play, it turns into rolling the dice even more for DPS, right? It turns into, I'm going to roll these dice, reroll everything that's not one of these dice, try to get these sixes that turn into more dice to roll more dice on wounds. 
When you saw them change Disgusting Resilient to just minus one damage, that was also an ushering of an age. Removal of an of army-wide extra die bullshits. So <laughs> exploding sixes, I think, is going to start turning into auto-wound mechanics, is what I've been detecting. So mm. I think we're seeing where like the modern, like the modernization of ninth of tenth edition. I think we're seeing it now. Like army-wide rules that can turn into more die rolls are actually showcasing that's not gonna it's gonna be more DPS with the same amount of die rolls. That's what auto wounding is. Because and the fact and, and the fact is that they don't even incur the 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 thing that allows them to generate the auto wound by doing anything. So it's not like I have to do a bunch of shit to achieve that result. It's just my opponent's playing his game. And yeah. his tokens are showing up. There's no, nothing's happening. And then I go, oh yeah, by the way, I pick one. That's it. Okay, we're done with that mechanic. Now, as I go through my turn, I'm looking at tokens out there. And I'm like, okay, less die rolls. <laughs> like it's, I actually really love it. It's very modern. I'm fucking stoked as a motherfucker. I didn't know any of this shit until you just told me, bro. I'm so stoked. Yeah, they have so much like really interesting things. Um, and you can't have it all, right? Like that needs to be said. So they have access to a really good set of tools, but you can't have your cake and eat it too in this instance, right? So Boo. If you take the um, the thing that is like the fight last. Well, that's a warlord tree. So you have to put that on one of your HQs, right? And, you know, warlord traits and relics are kind of at a premium right now. So you're giving up uh, possibly like a more offensive warlord tree or possibly a more like buffy warlord tree to take this like fight last ability um things like your uh relics like you have some really good relics that uh give you utility or buff your guys so you're not able to have like your crazy buffs and also an insane dps relic that kind of thing um you can't have uh all of the great uh league traits Right, because one of the problems we ran into with previous codexes is that you could like see this one really good trait from this one chapter and a good trait from another chapter, and then both of those would be on the make your own chapter, and so you would just do that. Um, that does not exist in this codex. You can make your own league, but these like cool rules, like the the Amir rule that gives your guys like the invul saves, um, that does not exist in the make your own traits. Like you got to really commit to one of these league play styles uh, because you can't have every single awesome thing at once. Yeah. Uh, and it's also important to note that like their troop choices, they have this, this defensive buff with the, uh, the void armor, but it's on a toughness four guy with one wound and a four up armor. Save. So, sure you can like put him in cover and all that kind of stuff but he's still not going to be as tough as your average intercessor like your average intercessor on the math is going to be way tougher than a hearth can warrior um and another thing to note about these guys is that uh war gear is actually going to be kind of important so you have your warriors and sure they just have like slightly better bolt guns uh they're not as tough but they have a whole slew of war gear they can take. So, for example, they can take a guy with a med pack, which gives them the uh, the Helix Gauntlet ability. So the first failed save uh, damage is changed to zero. Um, they can take a comms array, which is kind of like a, the old box caster style or the, the data tether kind of thing, where if they're within so many inches of your character, they still get his buff, but you have to pay for this piece of war gear. Um, there's a, a scanner that lets you ignore cover. So if you want to mm -hmm. ignore light cover, you got to buy this, this scanner. Um, and they have some cool weapons, but you can only take two of them, right? So there's no, like, my whole squad has, like, all this cool shit. It's like you get two special weapons. They're, like, OG tactical squads. Um, I bet that's, what, cool I bet that's what comes like, in the box, too. Yep. Uh, yeah, the Warriors, like, it, so it looks have, like. Um, all these really cool options, but you're limited in what you can actually take. And uh, the points are not as spammable 
as you might think, like a basic uh, troop unit is 110 points because um, they're 11 points a guy. And then all their war gear stuff is like 10 points here, 10 points here, five points here, that kind of thing. Uh, Hearth Guard, which are kind of like your big beefy Terminator guys, they're 35 points a model. So they're actually more than a Chaos Terminator. The uh, Berserkers are 22 points a model for a you know, Berserker guy with a six-up armor save, right? Um, some of their stuff is, like I think, pretty fair. Like Their bikes are uh, 30 points a piece, so a unit of three is 90 points. And then if you want the good stuff, you have to pay for it. You get to upgrade them for another like, 10, 15 points. Um, and they have no close combat weapons. So if you touch these guys, like that's that's not what they want um the uh land fortress that we talked about right it's 230 points for mm. the mainline battle tank uh it's kind of right i think at a good uh point cost for what you're getting because it's this big t8 16 wound main battle tank that also has uh transport capability it's got like one good gun on it and the other guns are kind of eh, kind of meh and a number of uh, upgrades that you can give it to it, but it's like 10 points, 10 points, 10 points. So, you know, if you want to stack these things to the guild, it's still going to be like 260 points or whatever. So it seems like a lot. you're not going to have like a million of these dudes. It's going to be a fairly elite army. That's what it's shaping up to look like. It's what, I mean, it's love the artwork, love these rules so far. You know, uh, excited to see what uh, the big brain schemers on the internet come up with, too. Oh, I'm sure they're already scheming. Yeah, and it's important to, um, like, if you're going to be playing against these guys, uh, their stuff is, like, really straight up. Like, there's th- none of this stuff is, like, hard to understand. Like, they don't have these, like, kind of word salad type rules like that their armies have. It's just like, mm. this is what it does, man. Like, it's just that. Eh. Um, and... Something to note, like the the power armor guys seem really good. These tough guys, they seem really good. But the thing is, they're kind of like the aspect warriors, or like kind of like dire avengers, in that um, only the sergeant comes with an invul save to start with. So you have these uh, like kind of terminator equivalent dudes that don't have an invul save. Only the sergeant does. So they're not as like hard to kill as you might think, like out the gate. So you're going to have to like kind of chew through some of these guys. Like you're going to force your opponent to spend CP on some buffs to kind of make them more defensive, that kind of thing. So they're, they're kind of resource heavy to make these guys really survivable. Well, fuck yeah. A lot of people in chat have been also talking about demons. We haven't uh, done a big demon breakdown yet. Got Got sidetracked by... All this shiny, shiny new stuff, but uh, the demon codex is flowing around out there, and so we got two totally different new faction or new faction and new codex that are so different in so different in so many different ways, but so powerful. Uh-huh. So at some point, we'll have to get together and scrape up a final thought process on the new demons. Maybe next week, but Wyatt's also got a tournament this weekend. He's bringing his cast basements back out, which he's been on a, a pretty fun winning streak with, and you're currently number one Red Corsairs. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, got we'll see. Uh, this Botan stuff comes out. I don't know. Like It's 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 going to be hard to stick with Chaos when I have all this shiny new stuff that I'm hyped for. Yeah, that's my, that's 40. That's 40K, man. 40K is like... It's been constant. a long time since I've been like, hyped through an army like this. Constantly... Constantly seeking new projects and new 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 models, man. It's like it's like my favorite part, man, is like finishing models and then seeing new models. You know, like it's 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 endless. Like I've never once like painted an army and been like, that's it. It's the last model I'll ever paint. I finally did it. I've done it. It's never (laughs) happened. (laughs) Fucking stoked. But uh yeah, let's get out of here so we can stay on schedule for our new time slot. Thank you for boots on the ground investigation, investigative Most journalism. Yeah. Uh, I apologize for my candy ass. Yeah, we gotta apologize for Rob. He's got it. He's got earlier bedtimes now. Doctor's orders. 
Wyatt will be keeping us updated, I'm sure, on his journey over the weekend with Red Corsairs. And I will kick it over to Wyatt to take us out of here. That's not how any of this works. Hey, Rob. Oh, hey. Hey, what are you saying? Oh, yeah, sure. Absolutely. Anything for you, buddy. (laughs) So that's it for this one, y'all. Make sure to head over to the uh, long word. I wasn't prepared for this. I I messed it. I'm good for one of these a year. Oh, Uh, my God, Rob. For exclusive content, early access videos, and more, become a veteran of the long war today.